And welcome back to Insunu Yezu. We want to welcome our good friends in the Philippines who are now joining us via this internet connection. So we welcome them and also to our friends in England, Ireland, and Italy. We are on page 56. And we're looking at now Jesus' relationship with priesthood, St. John, the beloved disciple, and his immaculate mother. Now he's in the chapel of a bishop. Now you see the connection now Jesus is going to make. How he brings about, first he ordained the apostles priests, then made them bishops. Now you see the progression here of what he's doing. Tonight I have spoken to you yet in another way. I have communicated to your heart something of what I hold in my Eucharistic heart towards my Father, that in me and with me and through me you may love him and glorify him, and towards my priests and all my desires for their purity, their holiness, their fruitfulness, may become the desires of your own heart and the burden you lift up in ceaseless prayer. Now, if you remember one time, <clears throat> uh, Venerable Bishop Sheen, in one of his programs, spoke about prayer and the necessity of prayer in one's life. And that necessity of prayer, he said, is the essence, the essence of all that is. So that the reality should then function within not only the heart of a priest, but the bishop as well. That is why he made the holy hour every day. The holy hour, he says, is that essence of the sanctity of life for the priest and bishop. To lift up in prayer the power of God's love for his people. He says there, fear not, I will help you every step of the way. This work is mine. And ask for guidance and light. In all things, even in details of what is to be done. So, bishops are to ask for guidance in their ministry as to what is to be done. I will direct and inspire the work from the beginning to the end. It is a work born of love of my pierced heart for priests and for you. My mother considers this work her own and she will carry it for those who labor in making it a reality with the solitude of her merciful heart. Once again, Jesus speaking about the heart of his mother. Trust in the intercession and protection of my mother. She is your perpetual help and the mediatrix of the graces that I have destined for those who will participate in this work. Once again, reference to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. This devotion to Our Lady of Perpetual Help was started by the Redemptorists. And it's interesting to note that Alphonsus Liguori had devotion to Our Lady, strong devotion. And so did St. John Newman. 
Now, when Newman came to this area, he did bring that devotion with him. It's very strong in Pittsburgh because that's where their headquarters was, and it still is. The Redemptors have a headquarters in Pittsburgh. When Newman was there, he saw to it, he was superior there, he saw to it that that devotion was in every parish that the Redemptors had in Pittsburgh and the surrounding areas. In fact, they would preach missions on it. They would go to parishes. Priests would invite them to come. I remember growing up, we had it in my home parish in Youngstown, St. Anthony's. The Redemptorist priest came from Pittsburgh. He had one week for the women, one week for the men. And they brought this big picture of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, put it in the sanctuary. And they preached on it. And how to pray to her. And what the relationship is, the human race, to our Blessed Mother. And how she would help people. So that devotion was very, very popular. And still is in some places. It is the essence of the heart of Mary. As I was pointing out to you. The twin hearts of Mary in relationship to statues that you see or pictures of Mary with the two hearts is the unification of her son's heart and her heart. Now, the statue you see there, uh, the sacred heart of Mary, shows the heart of Mary. Now, that's the original German statue of the Sacred Heart of Mary. Now, Barb got that from somewhere, and it's been here, and I don't know if it was Rhoda Wise's or Mother Angelica's. I'll have to ask her. But that's how, if you go to Germany, and you go to a church, Sacred Heart of Mary in Germany, that's the kind of statue you'll find there. Or in Austria or any German sector, uh, you'll see statues like that of the Sacred Heart of Mary. So it's the essence of that. And then it's also perpetual help. Because you're going to your mother. And you lay your head against your mother's chest. Even as a child you did that. And your mother was a source of help. So too here. So that's what Jesus is saying here. She is your perpetual help. And bishops must begin to see this. Some bishops are, some are just the same old routine. When I think, and I think I heard one bishop say this, and I'm trying to think who it was. He was just made a bishop not too long ago. He took for his motto, all things in Mary. And he said, I will, he says, first of all, I am a priest. And I will continue to function as a priest. The title I have is a title of the Apostle. But the Apostles didn't change. Neither will I. In other words, he says, I will not let being a bishop go to my head. I'm a simple man, simple priest, and a simple bishop. He lives in the cathedral rectory. No ruffles and flourishes about him. And he functions as a bishop when need be. But other than that, people see him around the cathedral. 
he hears confessions, says the noon mass, unless he has something else scheduled. But he's a people's bishop. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Bishops have to be people bishops. Thank God we have a bishop like that. He's a people bishop. <laughs> and you, know, you talk to Bishop Murray, he's jolly, happy, puts his arm around you, joke with you, make you laugh, but he understands. That's the difference. He understands you. And that's a sign of a good bishop. A bishop that understands his people is an excellent bishop. Thank God we are blessed with him. And God gave him back to us. Because he was knocking at the door of Peter. <laughs> and we thank Almighty God that he has given him back to us. That's what Bishop Sheen was like. And that should be the model of every bishop. If you look there, the bottom of page 56. I told our Lord that I felt tired. I said, oh, my beloved Jesus, the efficiency and fruitfulness of this time of adoration comes not from me, but from thee. It is all thy doing. I place myself before thee as a vessel to be filled. Then I asked our Blessed Mother, Mediatrix of all grace, to open her hands over me and bestow on me what she knows to be best for me and for the priests whom I represent in the presence of her son. So this bishop... And we think it's an Irish bishop because he would have more contact than Irish bishop here, being from Ireland, this monk. So in his prayer, back to Jesus, this bishop is praying. In other words, this holy monk is talking to this bishop in 08 of what Jesus said to him. And the bishop responds with that prayer. And I think that what has happened here, and if I'm guessing correctly from those that came from Ireland, that this bishop is the Archbishop of Ireland, of Dublin. because the fact that more burden is placed upon him now because of the situation in Ireland with government, with priests, closures of churches, abandonment of faith by the laity. So I think that, and as the guests that came from Ireland, Donna and her husband and son, came from Ireland, we were talking. She says, yes, the bishop of of Dublin is really burdened at this point, really carrying a heavy cross. So I think that this was a preparation for him of what was coming. So we see that it's not only in the essence of priests, but bishops and now laity. Because this movement now will go into the hearts of the laity as evangelizers for priests. This evangelization, and I, once again, this call to evangelization for the laity, which was begun in our diocese several years ago, 
gives the laity an opportunity to evangelize with their parish priest. Or to evangelize young men to be priests. Do you all remember those books that were passed out in your church? It had the picture, the inside of the cathedral on it. And then it says, pastoral plan for evangelization. You open up, there was a picture of Bishop Murray. Yeah, I remember. yeah we distribute them to all the parishioners, yes. And all the churches of the Diocese of Youngstown. We gave them out. We had them in the back of our church. We had them in our pews. I know St. Paul's did because <laughs> Father Jay was the dean at that time. He come knocking on my door. He says, I got a present for you. I said, what is it, Jay? He says, look in my car. I got three boxes of books for you. <laughs> so the janitor helped him take them up to the church. So we were laughing about that. He said, you got three. He says, I got 43. <laughs> so we laughed about that. And there was like a, a, a hundred in a box. I mean, they were, you know, they were in small boxes. There was like a hundred books in a box. So we laughed about that. But we gave them out. And um, in that pastoral plan, it had a, the five-year program up to today, up to 2018 and 19, that described how the laity in this new evangelization would evangelize within their parish, working with other parish. That's how our that five parish program came about for Eastern Star County for the youth. Uh, at that time, we had a, a, a sister Barbara Clot was with us, and she worked with us five pastors, and she did all the phone calls that they ask you to make. You know, she did all that to five parishes. God bless her, to get these kids and families together to form what we call Trivia Night. And it's still going on today, Eastern Star County. They hold it every year at Sacred Heart of Mary Church Hall. So that was our first plan of evangelization to bring the parishes of Alliance and Louisville together because we knew eventually that's what's going to happen. You know, we're going to be all merged. So that part of evangelization saw priests working together and laity. So this is the plan that Jesus now is telling his priests. That yes, we're going to be doing a new way of evangelizing. And the laity will also be in this grouping of love and evangelization and this idea of priests working together in one heart. All right, we're going to leave it there because it's almost time for Mass. I'd like for you to read up to page 62, okay, for next time. And we will now say our closing prayer. <clears throat> Dear St. Benedict, you are a blessing indeed. As your name indicates, practicing what you preach, you founded a monastic tradition of the West by joining prayer to the labor for God, both liturgical and private prayer. Help all religious to follow their rule and to be true to their vocation. May they labor and pray for the world to the greater glory of God. Amen. God our Father, you made St. Benedict an outstanding guide to teach men how to live in your service. Grant that by preferring your love to everything else, you may walk in the way of your commandments. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us next time. For in Sunu Yesu, may God bless you.